Hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Walter Cachera. I'm from uh, Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in the Uniformed Services University. Um, I'd like to thank um, the Society for the opportunity to present our uh, data. And today we'll be talking about our, our focused needs assessment um, for fasciotomy training. Um, we have the standard uh, DOD disclaimer. Uh, additionally, Colonel Ritter, our senior author, receives royalty and research support from the Henry Jackson Foundation. Um, however, uh, that support does not um, cross over into this study. So today we'll be covering uh, our need for additional fasciotomy training, um, our study design and conduct, uh, our findings, and then future directions from this. So the average uh, US surgery uh, um, Residency graduate in 2012 performed less than one fasciotomy for trauma during the entirety of their residency. And this is married up with the fact that the, uh, many of the wounds from the conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan are extremity injuries uh, resulting from blast. And the study performed by Dr. Rittenauer uh, in 2008, uh, which looked at the 2006 data, uh, showed that up to 17% of fasciotomies performed in combat casualties were inadequate. And of these, 41% had a uh, compartment that was missed completely, and 63% had inadequate fascial incisions for at least one compartment. Why this matters is because patients who require a revision fasciotomy at a higher level of care have both a higher rate of muscle excision and a higher rate of mortality. So obviously this is a problem that um, you seek to correct. So as a result of that, in 2006, uh, there was a fasciotomy training program uh, that emphasized liberal use of early prophylactic fasciotomy and emphasized proper surgical technique. And as a result of this training program, the revision rate dropped from that 17% that was seen in 2006 down to 8%. Uh, at the same time, the mortality rate uh, decreased from 8% down to 3%. Additionally, uh, on the civilian side, the asset course um, was being stood up around the same time. This is a cadaveric training program uh, that utilized real-time and video-based feedback of student performance uh, to help teach, um, amongst other things, lower extremity fasciotomy. As a result of this training for residents uh, that were involved in it, the rates of four compartment decompression improved from 5% in the pre-course assessment to 33% following, immediately following the course. As part of the training, they conducted a follow-up survey at, um, and assessment at 12 to 18 months following completion of the course, um, and that showed good, reasonable durability with 26% of residents still able to achieve four compartment decompression. Of note, uh, during the initial uh, validation paper for this course, um, they had a series of attending surgeons uh, undergo the same assessment technique, and only 40% of these surgeons successfully decompressed all four compartments. So as an offshoot to the asset course, uh, as part of pre-deployment training, a uh, simulation-based model uh, was developed by Dr. Boyer, uh, who was also involved in the development of the asset course. And these used simulated uh, lower extremity models um, from operative experience. And this course was conducted for 42 US and allied military surgeons prior to their deployment. Uh, as part of this course, uh, they performed a uh, two incision, four compartment fasciotomy, um, and those legs were preserved for, um, for feedback during the course. So these are uh, copies of the leg models. Uh, they consist of multiple tissue planes um, and simulations of the vessels and nerves um, in addition to the muscular compartments. And just as a refresher for the two incision, four compartment fasciotomy, it uh, consists of the lateral incision, which decompresses the lateral and anterior compartment, a medial incision, which uh, uh, accesses both the superficial and the deep posterior compartment. So our needs assessment looked at what errors were actually being made during this, and the way we classified these was based on both the skin incision, so whether or not it extended uh, proximally and distally enough using the, for the lateral incision, the bony landmarks of the fibular head and the lateral malleolus, as well as where exactly the incision was placed, uh, with the intention being to have it placed within one and a half uh, centimeters anterior to the fibula, as measured by the fibular head. 
Uh, after making the skin incision, uh, the next step is to identify the intramuscular septum and to open both the anterior and lateral compartment. Additionally, in uh, concordance with the CPG for fasciotomy, making the H-shaped incision across the uh, intramuscular septum to ensure adequate decompression. For the medial uh, incision, uh, also looking to ensure adequate distal and proximal extension um, using the tibial plateau and the medial malleolus as the bony landmarks, and positioning of the uh, incision um, more than one and a half centimeters posterior to the edge of the tibia. As part of the fascial incision, uh, ensuring that both the superficial uh, posterior compartment was opened, uh, as well as the deep compartment, which entails taking down the soleus from the posterior aspect of the tibia and ensuring to identify the neuromuscular bundle there. So this is um, all of the 18 different errors that were possible uh, to um, do on one of these, these models. And so what we found, of these 42 models, only four had no errors associated with them for a, a rate of less than 10%. On average, our models had about uh, four and a half error, major errors. Um, so those included inadequate skin incisions, inadequate fascial incisions, or missed compartments. Uh, additionally, there was about uh, a rate of 0.5 minor errors, and those were a failure to make an H-shaped incision over the intramuscular septum and a division of the greater saphenous vein. So of our models, 26% had a missed compartment. Uh, the most common of those were the deep posterior and the anterior compartments. Additionally, 69% had inadequate or poorly placed skin incisions, uh, with the most common issues being uh, inadequate extension either distally or proximally. Um, and, and as you can see there, 86% had inadequate fascial incisions, uh, again, relating to inadequate extension either distal or proximal along the fascial plane. So looking at these um, pre-course assessments, uh, our data are similar to what um, has been seen from uh, actual operative performance during OIF and OEF. And so our future work um, is to develop a simulation-based error recognition and mastery learning training curriculum. Um, as part of this, uh, the initial um, programs were set up as cadaveric studies. And as you can see there, cost around $2,000 per cadaver. Um, even if you break it down into just uh, getting the cadaveric legs, those run at about $250 a piece. And that's not even including the regulatory and storage burdens uh, that would further increase that cost. If you look at just the um, purely simulation-based with the students performing a pre- and post-course assessment. The leg models run at about $750 a piece, um, and so assuming just two legs per student, that runs at about $1,500 per student, uh, which is less than the cadaveric model. So what we're proposing is transitioning from these uh, cadaveric and simulation-based studies, which are still resulting in around a 10% um, error rate and moving to an error recognition model where a student evaluates 10 to 15 previously performed uh, fasciotomies to identify any errors that are present uh, and identify the steps that would be necessary to correct those. Following this uh, evaluation of these legs, uh, they would then be assessed on a fasciotomy that they would uh, perform by themselves and be given feedback on that. Based on our analysis, uh, we anticipate that about 20 models would be needed to start up a course, which is a $15,000 one-time cost, in addition to the $750 per student for the assessment model. One of the nice things about this is uh, using these simulated legs, they are uh, capable of being preserved for long periods of time, uh, which enables us to grow uh, the catalog of legs that we can use for the error recognition training. So I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, happy to take any questions.